how's it going? About a month ago, I woke up and thought to myself, how can I cause myself the most pain? I tried playing ranked Overwatch 2 and while I did go hollow, it wasn't enough. I tried refreshing the Bloodborne wiki over and over and over, waiting for it to update for a PC port, but that still wasn't enough. Then, one blustery, stormy night, as I stood by the window watching the thunder clouds roil and tumble overhead, I poured a glass of my favourite beverage, a circa 1902 glass of Coca-Cola, and opened my computer for a pleasant viewing of my favourite pastime, Dark Souls challenge videos. After some time, one caught my eye. Challenger Andy's All Gwyn Run. I watched him struggle, create strategies, use the Gwyns against each other, and suddenly, I had my idea. My all-time favourite Dark Souls challenges are not the tedious ones, but the really weird ones. While it is entertaining to watch someone beat the game with fists, the challenge is in the skill level of the creator, not in anything else. I love watching the videos that require unusual methods and strategies, that actually force the person playing to use more than just their skill level. I'm far from the best at Dark Souls type games, but I consider myself decent. And so to create a video that relies on nothing but my skill would make it a foregone conclusion. Eventually, I would beat Melania with only my fists. All it would take is time. And so I present to you probably the worst gaming experience of my entire life. Dark Souls, but every single enemy is Manus, the unequivocally hardest boss in the entire game. Before I start, I'll quickly give some context. Manus is enormous, has the single highest health pool in the game of one enemy, has enormous range, damage, speed, and a second phase with even harder attacks. And to every rat, every hollow, in every small cramped corridor has become him. <laughs> Let's get to it. Right, first things first. This run utilises the randomizer mod for Dark Souls Remastered. The Prepare to Die edition isn't available on Steam, so unfortunately I had no choice. Why do I say unfortunately? Well, this randomizer, as opposed to the Prepare to Die edition, actually doesn't allow friendly fire. What this means is that for every single cramped corridor with 20 different manuses clumped together at the end, I will need to get rid of every single one, provided I have the resources. What this unfortunately means is that the asylum is, as far as I can tell, humanly impossible to complete. Over the course of several files and about six hours, I did my absolute best. I would get slapped at the start, get power posed on by this manus, then make my way into the asylum demon. Said demon would not fall down, so I would have no choice but to keep going. As a quick side note as well, the asylum would have been possible if the manus actually would fall in the room, it would be extremely slow and I'd have to remake my character probably hundreds of times every single time I died, but I could definitely finish the asylum that way. Anyways, the manus in this corridor would either have fallen out of the map or be stuck in this corridor, but would eventually let me pass with this jump move. Then I would make my way to Oscar with no real problems, but then run into a very large issue. The corridor leading to the boss is absolutely choked with menaces. In a regular playthrough, there are about 5 or 6 hollows total in this upper section, and due to this mod, they can't kill each other via friendly fire. This is also taking into account whether or not I'm actually able to make it there, as if the manaces don't fall out of the map, there's also two extra ones, one right before the door and one after, making it almost impossible to reach the fog door. Which by all rights is completely impossible to get through, as there is no possible way to kill the manaces squished there. Slowly jump attacking them and ducking might seem viable, but the dark magic would just catch me in the second phase, as it isn't possible to dodge it with this little room. That left, the only option is to get the big key by killing the Asylum Manus through the door. I could very reliably hit for about 15 damage every time he did the slam attack, but because of how his body looks, Manus's attacks are very hard to predict unless you can see all of him. I had a pretty good streak going by just running attacking his arm, but he always got me with a random surprise attack in the end. 
After losing a 15 minute attempt, I felt my way around to try and cheese him. There wasn't a single spot in the courtyard that stopped him from hitting me. So I tried the stairs instead. I found a little spot near the stairs that let me hit the Asylum Manus through the wall every now and again, but it was extremely slow and very unsafe. I tried for hours, and eventually came to an unfortunate conclusion. As far as I can tell, All Manus Asylum is borderline impossible in the remastered edition. I could see it working in the Prepare to Die edition by baiting all of the Manuses up the top to hit each other, but without friendly fire, I don't think it's possible. With that, I decided it honestly would just be better to begin the run in earnest at Firelink Shrine. I felt a little sad, but considering this is an all mana run, it's not like there wouldn't be a hundred other walls that felt completely unscalable. Anyways, while I fight off some very weird looking manuses, I'll go over the rules. First up, this is an all bosses run because, of course. Second, no glitches or exploits can be used, despite the odds. That means that despite how difficult it may seem, I can't use, say, a move swapped rapier for quick and high damage. I have to use whatever tools the game provides, and nothing more. Third, and this is more of a statement, I won't be using quit outs unless there is literally no other option. If you're not aware, quitting out and restarting a FromSoft title resets all enemies to their default position, while keeping you at yours. In this run, there were only two moments that were absolutely necessary for abusing quitouts. And when I say necessary, I mean that it literally was not possible to get past, even with the absolute maximum tools available at that point. That basically sums up all the rules, and with that, I can begin this horrible run in earnest. Starting off at Firelink, I am met with the beautiful sight of every single Manus charging off the cliff, each netting me about 30k souls. Why they drop 30k and not the 60k Manus should actually drop, I don't know, but his health and damage are unchanged, as you'll see. I didn't really have an idea for a good build for this run, so I thought 50 Vigor and 40 Endurance was a good place to start. I do a quick suicide run into the graveyard for both the Winged Spear and the Zweihander, getting a glimpse of a very annoying issue I'll run into later. I didn't really have a plan for these weapons, but anything felt better than my dodgy broadsword at this point. I leveled my strength to a respectable amount, and upped my endurance to 45. Even with 45, I couldn't fast roll with my armor on, so I headed down to the ruins with zero fashion souls. The congregation of Manai awaited me, but thankfully they were all passive. Just as a side note, Manuses in this run act the same as the enemies they replace. Passive Hollows become T-Posing Behemoths, and everything else becomes regular Angry Abyss Daddy. Anyways, with Master Key thankfully in hand, I head into the valley. The Manus Dragon randomly wakes up, but I bait him off the cliff. This area isn't very difficult, most of the mana I just fall off, and the rest, well... Anyways, I make my way into the basin. After dodging the Black Knight Manus, I grab the Grass Crest Shield, which is as extremely useful in this run as you can imagine. The Lizard Manus decides I needed a quick supply drop, and after taking time to decide, the Black Knight joins in. After deciding I needed to appreciate the basin a little more, I try again before getting my prostate checked by a massive Black Hand, and not in the good way unfortunately. After admiring the scenery, I die AGAIN before I finally get past the tree mana. The demon manus jump scares me, but with a little luck, I get to my first real chunk of progress, Andre. He sells titanite shards and large arrows, two incredibly useful items on this run. I upgrade my Zwei and also grab the crest as well. I try to test out the Zwei on the demon, and after it goes pretty well, I head upstairs to check out the parish. With steadily mounting dread, I try to squeeze past, but with three or four manuses just in this corridor, there's no chance. I try a few times, but yeah, I'm gonna have to beat every single one of these guys to get past. <laughs> 
back at Andre, I upgrade my armor and realize he actually doesn't sell a bow. The literal only possible way I can get through to the parish. The closest one is actually in the basin, the place I died three or four times in trying to get here. The demon menace actually steps aside for some reason, and after giving me a little love tap, I test out the damage. 87. That is 76 hits to kill a single menace. Sobbing violently, I head into the forest, dodging the tree mana, and after getting hit through the wall, a very common theme for the next 30 hours, I grab the longbow. I can't use it just yet, however, so I head up to the parish choke point to farm a little. I don't know which one, but one menace falls off after a bit, which is a nice little 30k souls. After some mind-numbing farming, I level up my decks to the point I can finally use my first true weapon against the Manus Plague. The damage is painfully low, but now I finally have a weapon I can reasonably use. I decide that the very first Manus to fall by my hand should be the Demon Manus, as he wouldn't respawn and would ensure that Andre is safe. While I very slowly whittle him down, I want to explain something about the bow the hidden power about its weapon class that completely crushes any other weapon class in this run. First of all, bows do only thrust damage. This means that if the arrow connects while a Manus is attacking, it will do higher damage. In a normal run, this can be boosted further with the Leo Ring, but since the ring is dropped rather than placed in the inventory when you beat Ornstein, I can't get it this run. The counter damage is just a nice little side note though. The true power of the bow is that Manus can be headshotted for extra damage. Hitting a headshot will interrupt whatever attack he is either winding up or using, placing him back in his aggro stance briefly. This then lines him up for another headshot, allowing me, with the right distance, to infinitely chain headshots. This strategy is one I will highly abuse throughout the entire run. I say abuse, but I will still only be doing a small amount more damage than usual. This strategy just makes it that much safer when I'm shooting a billion arrows. Another thing to note is that throughout this run, you'll see me adjust the angle I'm shooting at depending on the distance and speed of the bow I'm using. Higher range means a straighter trajectory, meaning aim lower, and shorter range or long distance, meaning I have to arc the arrow. I get better with this strategy throughout the run, which of course means a single mass kill at this point takes absolutely forever, as I don't figure out this strategy for quite some time. Something important to know about Manus, however, is if you are close to him and keep firing projectiles, he will actually begin to dodge, extending the already lengthy process to kill even one. It isn't often this happens, usually the Manuses are either stuck in their running pose in a hallway, or try to dodge and get hit by the counter damage, but when it is an issue, it's very aggravating. This run just can't give me any nice things. <laughs> One more thing before I continue though, the counter damage and headshot damage actually can stack if the timing is exactly right, but it didn't happen very often, so it's only a small side note. It is very satisfying though. Anyways, back to the run. After approximately 11 and a half minutes and 238 arrows, the very first Manus finally died. I finally had a mostly clear route back to Firelink and had made a little bit of territory in the Manus filled landscape. It wasn't much progress, but every little bit felt like a major victory. As any Dark Souls player would know, the progress route throughout the game requires both the Bell Gargoyles and Quelag to be beaten. The areas for both of those bosses are absolutely choked with enemies the church pathway being a small teaser of what's inside. Therefore, I decided my best bet was to up my defense as much as I could. With leather armor equipped, the only armor I can actually light roll with, I headed into the garden. Out of fear of being spawn killed, I didn't get the bonfire, but just ran straight through to the deep garden. The NPCs here didn't turn into manaces for some reason, which was pretty lucky, as it gave me a clear path to joining the hunters. I de aggroed all the NPCs for various nefarious reasons and headed towards the stone armor. And headed towards the stone armor, one of the highest physical and magic defense sets in the game, I thought it would be extremely useful for this next chunk of the run. I couldn't fast draw with it by far, but I thought the high defense might make up for it. With a Fashion Souls boost, I decided that I was going to break through the wall of Mano, no matter how long it takes. After 25 minutes of Dark Souls 3 PvP and around 600 arrows, my longbow shaped laxative finally cleared out this shitty hallway. I beat the last one with this way before realizing that some of the hollow menaces had fallen into the church, blocking the way to Firelink. 
I looked around to the second entrance, but there was a menace blocking every single doorway, and I was so bored of shooting that I couldn't be bothered. I decided to risk it all and face tank it with my new armor. I charged right in, and had my lower intestines twisted into handcuffs for the menaces to face fuck me with. The super awesome part of this is that every single menace just respawned, meaning just to get past the crossbow hollows at the bridge, it took nearly half an hour. That is not counting the 20 odd menaces still in the church. I decided to head back to Firelink to think about where to head. After coming up the elevator, I realised that Firelink was not actually safe, and somehow if you come up from the valley, a menace gets trapped near where Lawtrek is. How awesome. It wasn't too big a deal, until it was too big a deal, and I had to very slowly kill him with the bow. Also to explain what's happening here, Manus is invisible because he is slightly too far for the game to load him in. Loading distances differ per area, but the hitboxes generally are still loaded. I shot the air for about 10 minutes before finally I could regain Firelink. I felt a little lost on what to do, so I just grinded for a bit till I hit around 30 decks. My options in route were still extremely limited, but I realised there was a very, very useful weapon within somewhat easy reach. I headed back up to the garden, trapping the manises on one side of the small walkway. With my higher decks, I could now deal 154 damage on a headshot, drastically reducing the time to kill for a single manis. I slowly lured all of the Ents out of the forest, trapping them in the same position or baiting them off the cliff before I could finally reach my goal, Faris. Faris drops the single highest range weapon in the game, the Black Bow. It upgrades with Titanite shards, shoots decently fast, has S scaling index, and makes shooting manaces far safer, as I can hang back further and more reliably hit headshots at long range, since it has less of an arc. Also, the draw animation is way cooler, so that's a big plus too. I now had two different ranged weapons to take on the hallway, which is important as I needed to fire that many arrows that the longbow would actually break before I killed them all. I slowly shot all of the bridge manaces again, and also experimented a little with the rest. I could semi-reliably hit the manaces stuck on the wall, but I wasn't ready to deal with shooting that many yet. I was able to get rid of one stuck near the entrance, and with a bit of luck, got the firekeeper soul and opened the shortcut. Leveling up again, I now sat at a healthy level 148, boosting my damage decently. If I wanted, I could stay at filing till I hit 99 in every offensive stat. But the main issue facing me right now was that the only way to really boost my damage is through upgrades. The only path to upgrading is through the Large Ember, an area clogged with enemies, including the Capra Demon, which has multiple enemies inside the fog wall. I wasn't really sure what to do, so I made what would probably be one of the best decisions in this run. I got both heal spells, Homeward and a Talisman. I knew I'd be spending an atrocious amount of time shooting manaces, occasionally taking chip damage, and even with an upgraded flask, I didn't have enough healing to outlast them all and the double manas boss fight. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention that, by the way? The gargoyles are two separate enemies. So after the 30 odd manaces in the church, I needed to beat two manaces at once with plus five weapons. Cool. I wasn't really sure what to do, so I headed up to the church to see what the run up to the gargoyles would look like. I thought I'd be safe in this little corridor corner, but I would take so much damage over time that it was absolutely impossible. Some of the hollows would be stuck up the top and unfortunately I needed to find a different strategy. Existential crisis sinking in, I decided to check out the other route I needed to complete, Blight Town. The second bell is down here, past the swamp and Quaylag herself. I slowly whittled one manus down at the tunnel entrance, then just booked it past the rest. Blight Town unfolded before me, the plague of manuses infesting every corner. The ones from the tunnel fell off the cliff, but the rest were crammed in the scaffolding, falling off the cliff, or in the deadliest mosh pit ever at the bottom of the elevator. Some of the snipers evidently fell off and died and wouldn't respawn, but there was still an impossible wall of manaces at the bottom. This is how I found that out. The mosquitoes, spiders, ogres and slimes were all squished together in one clump with the mosquitoes also respawning if I managed to kill them later on. I actually wasn't sure which route felt more impossible at this point. <laughs> the one good thing about Blight Town is that I accrued an enormous amount of souls by heading down the elevator, which I smartly lost by trying to run past all of them. If you're wondering, I died so quickly that the hit animations for my character couldn't play.
It took me a few tries to get my souls back, but I eventually got to Firelink with three and a half million souls. I poured every single drop into Faith, for both better miracles and for a certain weapon I was hoping would be useful later on. I tried a few more times in the swamp, attempting to thin out the hordes stuck on the stairs, and then hopefully outrun the rest. This quickly became impossible, as there was no way to tell what Manasses would respawn instantly, so I would waste precious durability and arrows just for him to literally run over after a few seconds. After attempting again to run, I headed back up to the parish. The only mildly achievable goal for me right now seemed to be the favouring, so with two bows, healing spells and an upgraded flask, I tried my luck with getting past the Manasses. I would be forced to get past this eventually, so I figured I may as well figure out a strategy now. Entering from the Firelink side, I could run straight up the stairs with not too much danger, but Manasses would always clog this corridor. For gits and shiggles, I tried to run straight through, but predictably was smushed. I had no choice but to play Dark Souls 3 PvP. On my next attempt, I ran to the centre of the church to lure as many men I down as I could. I got very lucky in how they fell, giving me enough time to make it up the stairs. The first Manus was kind enough to step aside, and then I was able to block him at the opposite corridor. The way forward was blocked by one Manus, but shooting wasn't completely safe, so I experimented a bit before finding a safish spot. I had gotten extremely lucky with how many Manuses had fallen, despite them hitting me through the wall, I made it past, and made it to Lautrec's cell, the distant stomps fading out. My ears bleeding a little less, I had an awkward scuffle with Lautrec, before getting the absolute best ring for this run the favour ring. The 20% boost would become astronomical later on, when I would be able to inflate my equip load and health even more, and reaching the stamina cap with 40 endurance gave me a ton more survivability. With 3 heal spells, 7 Estus and an enormous ego boost from getting the ring, I decided to push through to the Gargs. A handful of Manuses were stuck near the ladder, blocking my progress up to the Gargs. The poor guy at the bottom was severely malnourished, so I fed him approximately 40 arrows before he decided I needed a black orb shoved up my back at Firelink, I ran back to Andre to restock while I thought of my strategy. Just a fun fact by the way, every single time I ran out of arrows I had to die several times to make it to Andre. This is important because resting at Firelink gives me 5 extra Estus, which is absolutely necessary to ensure I have enough heals for the gargoyles. So after every single long attempt, I have to get absolutely pounded by a ton of enormous black monsters just to refill on resources. This is just a little bit of traumatic context to the next chunk of this journey, and part of how painful it was. Before I truly submitted to the very lengthy process of shooting every single Manus, I desperately tried to rush through, baiting the Manuses off the balcony, dodging past this Manus, and getting to the opposite side. I had the idea in my head that since this side of the church is higher up, I would be safe from the menaces at the bottom while I shut the ones stuck by the ladder. This strategy was very hard to pull off, however, as I would get spit roasted in the corridor between both menaces, while I tried to headshot lock the one on the stairs. The menaces from down below could still hit me as well, which made it very hard to outlast the corridor. I tried again, but ran into a new problem. The dark bead of the stairs manus could actually hit me, effectively ruining any attempt it happened in, as I'd get stun locked, then before I could heal, I'd get tickled from the church floor. On the next attempt, I didn't even make it to the stairs. Can you feel the dread starting to sink in? I definitely could. No strategy for this chunk was airtight, which was immensely frustrating for me. I even tried ditching the bow and going for fast attacks with the spear and, well, the bow it was. I don't have a death counter for this run, but oh my lord, the church definitely numbered in the dozens. My next go, I decided to try a different strategy. A much slower, but hopefully safer strategy. I ran towards the other entrance and pressed R1 for a solid 15 minutes. 400 arrows later, the hallway was clear. There was still a lot more manuses clogged up further in the pipe, so I ran into the church to bait as many as I could to this little hallway. I only got one unfortunately, forcing me to head in and bait more. There was only one Manus left on the floor, so ad nauseum. With the floor cleared, I took up position, sniping Manuses through the wall. I could semi-reliably headshot lock them through the wall, and after slowly clearing them out through a mixture of shooting and baiting them to the bridge for more shooting, I made it to the ladder Manus, 700 arrows and half an hour later. I was running low on large arrows, so I decided to swap to the less damaging ones to save them for the boss fight. After taking out the lower Manuses, I realised there was no real way to hit the Manus stuck above. I decided that I would just risk it at full health, as at this point I could tank a handful of hits. 
This Manus tried as hard as he could to kill me, knocking me down to stall and doing his combo move while I climbed, but I made it up to the top with a sliver of health. Forty two minutes. It had taken me 42 minutes for one single attempt at this boss fight. I stalled for a while outside the fog because oh my god, I did not want to have to go through that again. I had no heal spells, no Estus, and only two humanity left for supplies. Things were not looking good, but I tried to be confident. At this point, I had effectively memorized the dodge timings of Manus, and so long as this boss played by the gargoyle's rule of the second one spawning at half health, I would be fine. I went into the fog, immediately being T-posed on by one of the gargoyles. The second gargoyle surveyed the land, whilst his brother heralded my arrival. I know what you're thinking, because I thought it too. I shot him a few times, but while the arrows connected, he was invulnerable until the cutscene played. I equipped both the spear and my bow, with the general idea that I would use the bow for the first phase to outrange him, and the spear to dodge the big black magic ring attack. The Manus lunged from his tower, with his tail rendering perfectly for some reason. I knew I wouldn't have much room to work with, so I tried to stunlock him, but missed the first shot. He backed me up to the wall, so I had no choice but to circle around him, exactly what he wanted me to do. He began the combo attack, and with literally zero possibility of dodging it, I could only wail in pain, as 42 minutes went down the drain. Just to help paint the picture, for a single attempt at this double trouble Manus boss fight with a very small and dangerous arena, I had to sit through 42 minutes of shooting just to probably die instantly on the next attempt. It isn't even mindless shooting either. I have to continuously run into the church to bait more Manuses out and be constantly aware of any that try and flank me. I just want you to understand the horrible conclusions I was coming to at this exact point in time. I may not have a solution to the fight yet, but I can definitely think of a way to make the journey easier, upgrading my healing. With that in mind, I decide to head to the catacombs for the Rite of Kindling. It isn't straightforward, however. The graveyard is the first obstacle. The Manus's legs are too thick to run past, and once they activate, I get throttled like I saw earlier in the run. Therefore, I decide to make use of a little trick. By headshotting the Manus's, I can knock them out of the idle pose and into the attack pose. The Manuses can actually make it to my position via the stairs, so instead I experiment with baiting them off the small cliff. If I sprint back quick enough, the Manuses will run to this little outcropping instead of the stairs. The other Manuses block them though, and they face the other way, so I didn't see a way of knocking them out of idle. On my next go, I knock every single Manus blocking the path out of idle, and bait them in the same spot, hoping they might body block each other off. It works for one, but more importantly, it gets them out of the way. Just enough for me to book it and safely make it to the catacombs. The catacombs have a shit ton of enemies, and I'm just hoping that I don't have to shoot much. The Council of Manus gives me a surprise visit, but thankfully they remain idle. It's extremely ominous in the dark, but these specific Manuses didn't wake up I think a single time in this whole playthrough. The next room is an issue though. There are a handful of Manuses here, and to get through I need to squeeze past, pull a lever, and run outside. I freak out after activating a Manus landmine, and somehow instantly get downstairs. The lever iframes scoop me in their warm, masculine arms. And while I get Goomba stomped, I now have a semi-consistent path to the catacombs, and the lever triggered. This time, I bait every Manus into the little alcove, and find I can actually headshot the Manuses blocking the cliff. This clears every single Manus out, giving me an easy way down to the catacombs and the Tomb of the Giants later on. Into the catacombs, I sprint past the tunnel, and after dodging a few land sharks, I arrive in the catacombs proper. The few Manuses within reach are stuck on the terrain, and from the soul count, it seems like every single other one fell off. 
I leg it past the only Manus and show him how to do the cliff skip. On my next try, one Manus gently helps me down and while I heal, I think about what I can do. I decide that the Titanite Manus is next on the hit list. Not only will he not respawn, but the Titanite will help with a certain weapon later on. I then drop down to the island amid the Sea of Menai. While this seems like a Blight Town situation initially, I find that with some luck, I can get the Horde stuck on one side of the rock, while I leg it on the other side. I absolutely fly down the rock hallway and make it to Manus Wheel with 7 Estus and 4 Humanity. With how small the room is, my initial strategy is stone armor for defense while using the spear and shield for a safe offense. I get death stared by black licorice and the fight begins. This setup immediately feels like a bad idea as I do 65 damage and mid roll as well. I frantically try and swap my armor and weapon while mana smacks me around. This wire hander does 147 damage, which is much better, but doesn't really warrant the weight and speed of the attacks, both of which get me badly hurt. After making a bit of space, I swap out my weapon for the bow and try to quickly shuffle my armor so I can light roll. With a bit of effort, I have my knight set and the bow equipped, and suddenly, it clicks. While aiming isn't really an option in the tight space, locking on and constantly dodging at medium range gives me safety and high damage, and with certain attacks, even locking on can headshot. It's not a free fight by any means, however, I'm out of Estus and have only 4 humanities left. Every time Manus does his combo attack, I'm all but guaranteed to take damage, wearing me down over time. Even so, I whittle him down, dodging and keeping up my DPS, until finally, my very first boss goes down. It's quite appropriate that it's Pinwheel. I homeward back and kindle the Firelink Bonfire. With the million souls from the Catacombs, I also up my faith to 40 and get a new miracle slot for even more heals. Tangible fucking progress. After all of the time I wasted on the gargoyles, it feels so, so good. I'm not done yet though. My next stop is the New Londo Ruins. Now, I actually managed to lose the footage for a good chunk of this area, but it basically just consisted of shooting in a corridor until I got the ladder shortcut. These menaces down below are somewhat difficult to dodge, but their damage is more just annoying. I don't have any real issues making it up the stairs and down to the ladder. The manus caged in the hallway? The manus caged in the walkway isn't a huge issue, but this next part is. My goal lies right beyond this building, and after safely making it inside, I head down the walkway up the stairs and claim my prize. The composite bow. Absolutely divine weapon, and far and away the savior of this playthrough, alongside the black bow. It does the highest damage, but has the lowest range. The range can't be fixed for a little while, but this bow still has the lowest stamina consumption with the highest damage giving me an extremely decent weapon for the gargoyles fight. The Manus wheel fight made me realize how useful a bow actually would be, so why not get the strongest one? Before I leave, I also unflood the city. I forgot to show it, but I also shot the guy from the walkway. This area took a much, much longer time to do than I'm showing, but this script is long enough already and it really was just shooting in a corridor. Back at Firelink, I now have a very, very good weapon and a stockpile of heals. As a side note, the composite bow scales with strength as well, making this bow specifically useful for this kind of run. There isn't a whole lot more I can access in the way of upgrades, but I want to put off the gargoyles a bit more. I head down to Blight Town to bash my head against a different brick wall for a change. I spend ages clearing the walkway and decide to make a run for it, right as a Manus respawns. I kill him and with it clear again, I decide to take the chance, but make one crucial mistake. I don't change my armor. The weight forces me to mid-roll, wasting the small chance I had. While I swap quick enough, it's too little too late, and all it takes is a single Manus hand to clap me before they all descend upon me. On the next try, I don't even make it down the swamp. Time to swap brick walls. I resign myself to another 45 minutes of shooting, an hour this time actually, since I swap spots to try and see if there's any cheesy strategies I can find. Nothing else really works except the corridor, there just isn't another spot as safe and consistent. I have some extremely close calls, but after about an hour of shooting and baiting, I make it to the top of the church, a fully fledged master baiter. I didn't play this attempt very safe, so I don't have a ton of heals, but I do have a much better weapon this time around. Immediately, the composite bow feels perfect. I take a ton of unnecessary damage. Fighting Menace on such a tiny arena is nerve wracking, especially with such a massive penalty for failing. But the bow just counters him so well, and the second gargoyle has full health. 
I die fucking immediately and take the biggest bite I can out of my monitor. Right. What can I realistically do against this? Not much seems to be the answer. I decide I need another side quest. After restocking and repairing, I head up to the Berg for the first time this run. Gaining new territory might make me feel a little less hollow. While the aqueduct is clear, the stairs are not. With the stairs now mostly clear, I head up, but accidentally fall into a part of the Berg I didn't know existed. The one Manus left does his best to hunt me down, but ends up launching me to safety in one of the buildings. I try to cheese him, but it clearly isn't safe, and as I find a way around him, silence settles upon the Berg. That sounds ominous, but oh my god, not hearing footsteps and seeing screen shake for even a moment gives me a great heal exert IRL. I head back to load in the Manus, but I guess he decided to dip. With nothing but quiet in this part of the Berg, I try to find a way out, and eventually find the ladder and the way back to the main path. And we are back. I make it up to the main area, but it is an absolute mess. The spot by the stairs isn't safe to shoot from, however, and I'm forced back to the main part by the sheer amount of muscly black hands. This part of the Berg is unfortunately thin enough for the mana to hit me through, but too small for me to get a decent sightline to shoot from safely. Therefore, I throw strategy out the window and just book it. I take a ton of damage, but my stockpile of heals is decent enough to the point it isn't a big issue. Most of the Manuses had fallen off by this point, so it was mostly clear. I also get a free chunk, I think from the Black Knight. Now, my main goal here was the undead merchant, the literally only guy who sells repair powder. This is the single only way to obtain it in the game, so it's really important I can make it to him before- oh, oh, alright, cool. That permanently forces me to have to repair after each attempt at the gargoyles. Meaning, if my armor breaks or both bows break, I have zero weapons, and the attempt is over. I feed this manus a steaming, soupy hot load of arrows as punishment, but he's just too good at swallowing them, so I just run past instead. I bait him off the cliff and don't light the bonfire out of fear of swarm camping. Now for Berg part 2. There are a ton of enemies in this next part, and unfortunately not many ways they can fall off. The first two are easy to kill, but the next part is a small issue. The next stairway is blocked off, necessitating another 5 minutes of R1 spam. But the only sightline isn't safe, as this other Manus can hit me easily. The issue here is that both sets of Manuses unload at any other sightline, including their hitboxes. The Manus inside the building only unloads visibly, but trying to find the hitbox of an invisible enemy is not fun. I try a few different spots, but none where the Manus is visible are actually safe. With a bit of luck, I get him stuck on the window, and after a very, very slow process of re-aiming every few shots to account for him dodging invisibly, he goes down. That clears the stairs for another bout of DS3 PvP, and I slowly work through every other mana stuck in this chunk. This one gets baited off, and I make it into the Taurus Tower in a blazing fast 36 minute attempt. Poor Havel didn't get transformed, so I put him out of his misery, acquiring the next stupidly useful piece of equipment for this run. Havel's ring. For now, it isn't as useful, but with how it scales, it'll become increasingly more powerful the more millions of souls I get. Onto the Taurus, with zero heals, half health, and three humanity. Luckily, the crossbow manuses had fallen off, and I rained down a billion little mosquitoes onto the poor Taurus. Before I keep going though, for some reason, another manus just pops into existence, just absolutely begging to be filled to bursting with my large arrow. The Taurus demon must have cracked his barrel on the top floor, because it turns out he was the lizard, giving me another chunk, luckily. Now, there are a lot of manuses stuck on the bridge, and they can't fall off. The only path available for them is the enormous archway right near Solaire, meaning the instant I run downstairs, they might all bum rush me. What do you know, they do exactly that. I barely squeeze past, but miss one dodge and then it was all over. 45 minutes down the drain. Again. <laughs> At least it was for something different this time. Luckily, I don't need to follow that path again. I head into Darkroot, aiming for the bottom of Havel's Tower. With a bit of luck, I get past the Crystal Manai and end up back at the bridge. I book it, and with a bit of luck, make it safely to Solaire. I'm starting to relax before I realize the Manuses can just jump over the small outcropping. I dodge past them, hoping poor Solaire doesn't get squished, and I book it down the bridge. The Manai were split enough for me to slowly get knocked down for the entire length. I grab the claymore, my main goal for this little side quest, before tripping on some horns. 
I wasn't sure how useful it would be, but it scales well with two stats and is a lot faster than this way. It also just felt good to have all reliable on me. I head back up to the bridge one more time to collect my souls, but get pounded roughly against the floor. This whole lengthy side quest might seem pointless, but with both rings, I could now wear full armor, the grass crest, and the claymore while still light rolling. The drip seemed worth it for the morale boost. Now, how else can I stall this? All right, the bird key. I stock up again at Andre and head to the parish, slowly getting through to the key. It was easier than I thought, unfortunately, and since I'm already here, I decide to very slowly make my way to the gargoyles again. A riveting 35 minutes later, I arrive back at the fog wall, this time with nine Estus to my name. My best chance so far, especially with my better armor and weapon. I head in again, slightly more hopeful than last time, and get knocked off the edge in record fucking time. I am losing my mind. Another 40 minutes later, I get to the fog again, with five heals and eight Estus. This time, I think through my options instead of just trying to fight him. That's when I notice the little balcony around the church. A balcony with a very small exit. A balcony that the manor struggles to deal with. A balcony that even when the second manor joins in, I can't be knocked off of. Even the dark orbs can't launch me over. It definitely isn't safe, but if I can just headshot lock one Manus, I have a chance. I can't get a good angle from here though, so I make the risky choice to head back out into the arena and try and bait the second Manus away. It only ends up achieving them swapping places. I have a very, very close moment, but pull off my heel just in time. Then, fate seems to give me a chance. The closest Manus can be shot right at the edge of the bricks, and he seems to be more or less stuck running. I even get the counter damage when he does small attacks, slowly whittling him down, bit by stressful bit. His dark bead frontal can't hit me, so he can't one-shot me and can only do slow, powerful attacks that I can tank through. I get cocky though, and try to close some space to speed it up, and nearly fit my whole keyboard in my mouth when he does his combo attack, but somehow I don't get knocked off. It was worth it though, because the poor gargoyle gets stuck right in the sideline and is finally headshotted to death. This fucking fight was 6 or 7 hours in the making, but it wasn't done yet. The last Manus couldn't even move, and while I could have fought him in the middle, I felt he deserved to feel hopeless, like he could do nothing, that there was an unavoidable obstacle in front of him that no matter how much he stalled, no matter how he planned, it couldn't be overcome. Relishing every single fucking arrow, I put him down, and after 7 straight hours, the first bell boss had fallen. Time for the next 3 quarters of the game. Right, back to reality. I'd only beaten one of the two impossible bell scenarios. Light Town was still on the agenda, and was still a massive issue. I tried a few more times to thin the horde out a little, but there was always such an enormous amount of manuses that it didn't matter. All it took was a single manus to start the combo attack, and the attempt was over. Still though, I couldn't give up. I tried my earlier tactic of clearing the staircase, but the only manuses that got stuck on the stairs were the respawning mosquitoes. It took about 5 minutes to kill one, and within literally 10 seconds, they would respawn. It gave me literally no openings. I tried to mess with the AI a little, maybe if I killed the respawning one and went up the elevator, I could get it stuck somewhere. No dice. They had a clear shot to the stairs regardless. It was at this point riding down the elevator that I decided I had no choice but to use the forbidden technique. There was literally no possible opening I could exploit in this spot. So this is one of the two places in the game that absolutely necessitated quit out spam. It wasn't free, but by very slowly crawling across the swamp, I could all but guarantee a step each quit out. Eventually, I made it to Quay Manus with a solid 12 Astus, and with my newfound strategy of the composite bow, he was a cakewalk. After around 10 hours, both bell bosses were finally beaten, and I could finally make a new territory. I couldn't get any stronger as of yet, but making tangible game progress was more than good enough for now. Before I began the long trek to the capital, I wanted to make sure I was fully prepared. To that end, I decided to head back to the catacombs for a side quest, getting the Dark Moon Ring. This is, as you can imagine, quite a lot harder than just making it to Pinwheel, as it actually requires going inside the catacombs and not just skipping them. If you're wondering why I'm doing this, it's so I can access Gwendolyn's fight since this is an all boss run. If you're wondering why I'm not just waiting till after ONS, then shooting Guinevere to open the fight anyway, well, it's because I had a plan in mind. Gwendolyn's soul can make the Dark Moon Bow, a very high investment weapon in a regular playthrough, requiring tons of decks, 
faith and constant souls poured into Moonlight Arrows. In exchange, it does massive magic damage. In my mind, this weapon would be extremely useful for this run, and would make a sizable upgrade to my arsenal. I'll explain how I was exactly perfectly wrong about this weapon later on. Anyways, after doing the same awkward dance as before to get into the catacombs, I slowly make my way through the interior, with a mix of baiting menaces off the edge and slow shooting. With a bit of effort, I make it to the right chunk of tunnels, but it is absolutely clogged with menaces. I try my signature technique of going in without a plan, but end up barely escaping, forcing me to actually use my brain. That's when I realise I could just take the bottom entrance instead. And so after dropping down, I head up to the tunnel and have my insides scrambled by a random hand. Unfortunately, not in a good way. Although it did ruin the attempt, at least I didn't die. So the 1.6 million souls I have on me is safe. I now sit at level 195, and I still haven't even made it inside Zen's yet. I'm trying to work my way up to 99 Endurance, which when combined with Havel's Ring and the Fap Ring will give me enough equip load to fast roll in the highest defense armor. Not quite there yet, but after a bit of farming I have reached 72 Endurance, enough to fast roll in full stone armor, with a bow and the Grass Crest Shield. I was now powerful enough to consistently win a one-on-one -on -one boss fight, which gave me a pretty sizable ego boost. Back to the catacombs. Repeat everything I said before and I'm now back at the same spot. This time I actually use my brain and whittle them down from a distance and I get to the dark moon tunnel. There's just a small issue though. I start to get to work, swapping to the right bow, before Mr. Dark Souls decides a death mosh pit is exactly what he wants. I fucking panic. But the stone armor's defense and poise comes in absolutely clutch and I make it to the ring just in time. I am then absolutely slaughtered. With that, everything I can feasibly reach on this side of the game is done and I can begin the trek to the capital. I stock up an Andre and head to Sens. After some classic or managed run gameplay, I make it to my new home for the next hour. In this tar pit, normally four Titanite demons spawn. Unfortunately, I need to kill them, as that Titanite will let me upgrade a boss weapon of my choice. The issue here is 1. There's only a few awkward angles I can shoot them from. 2. There are a handful of menaces in this pit that aren't demons, so they just expedite the process. And 3. I can't actually hit the last few from up the top. I experiment a little with the area, taking out one with a lucky pillar, but eventually I do have to drop down. There isn't really a safe spot to shoot from, putting me on a timer to take out the right menaces before I die, since the demon ones won't respawn, but the others will. Eventually there's just one left. But the instant he gets to half health, he reveals his second phase, splitting off via mitosis. I very happily spawned back at the bonfire, ruminating on the hour I just wasted for a single demon titanite. Since every other demon survived apparently, I then reveal my second phase moveset, consisting of giving up and just putting this on the to-do list. Sen's fortress is actually pretty easy, everything is too narrow for manas to be a large issue. I don't really get blocked until I get to the top but it's nothing some R1 spam can't fix. With a bit of effort, I make it to whoever this guy is called, and finally get my hands on large titanite. I can't use it yet, but it's nice to have. I also grab the greatsword, an appropriate weapon considering the enemies in this run, the tower shield, and feather arrows, the butter to the composite bow's bread, but I won't realize that for a little while. Then it's time for the iron golem, until I notice that the manus is already loaded in. It feels so good to be the cheeser instead of the cheesed for once. With that, I finally make it to the capital. Despite what waits for me at the end of it, finally seeing some scenery that isn't the parish or blight town is such a good feeling. The starting area is a bit of a mess, but with a bit of luck I make it to the elevator and bait a few off so I can actually get the bonfire. I head back up and despite being ganked after getting the Titanite and after baiting even more off, I grab the Anor Londa bonfire for later. Easy part is done, time for the city. I head down the elevator, and after killing the gargoyle so we won't respawn and grabbing more titanite, I head into the painting room. It was mercifully easy. The menaces were way too curvy and well endowed to fit on the rafters, and I had a pleasant stroll to the other side. After fixing the bridge, I hightail it to the chamber of the twink, but unfortunately I get catfished by another manus and sadly put him down, netting me Gwendolyn's soul. I decide to just head into the cathedral instead of restocking first, mainly because I'm fairly sure most of the manuses would just fall off. Thankfully I was right, and had another pleasant walk up to the fog wall. As you can imagine, I'm absolutely dreading what I'm soon going up against, so I am absolutely taking whatever small wins I get in this run. 
The peace of Soleil's room is absolutely shattered by the sheer amount of Manus footsteps in the castle. After getting well and used to the noise that would become my home for the next few hours, I head up towards the giant. The giant blacksmith, absolute saviour of this run for undisclosed reasons as of now, sells every material I need infinitely, as well as both large, feather and moonlight arrows. I fully stuck up on everything, and upgrade a handful of different things to try and theorycraft how the hell I can out damage two manuses at once. Sunlight Blade with the Greatsword plus 5 only does 334 damage, and this is two 6000 health bosses we are talking about. It also doesn't help that almost every single melee weapon available to me right now that has half decent damage is slow and dangerous to use, especially stamina consumption wise. And so I decide agility is more important than flat damage. After kiting the army of Menai in the main hall, I head into the next idiotic impossibility of this run. And that's that. I didn't initially plan for this to be a multiple parts video, but this script is long enough as it is. If you watch this far, I have very deep feelings for you, and I want you to know that you are worth just as much to me as the Black Knight Greatsword, a measure of worth you'll be able to understand in part 2, coming as soon as my upload schedule allows. Goodbye, thank you for watching, and subscribe if masochism is entertaining to you.